Hi, and welcome back to Property Insight. My name is Mark Ashworth. And I'm Neil Harding. And what fun things have we got to talk to you about today? Well, we're going to be talking about how to get money out of your limited company. So this is assuming that you've decided, uh, because you've had a good conversation with your tax accountant, who's advised you to uh, put your property investments into a limited company. So you've got rental income coming into that limited company. And at the end of the year, hopefully there's a profit. And we're going to talk about how you um, get that profit or that income out of the limited company into you and, and what taxes that you, you, you may have to pay. Let's start with the first one, which is probably the most obvious, which is your own salary. Yeah, that's right. So as a director of the company, you are also an employee of that company and you are able to charge a salary through the company for the services that you provide as a director to the business. And that salary can be a variable amount. It can be quite often an amount equal to, for example, the personal allowance. So if there's no other source of income, what often people do is charge um, just over 12,000 pounds. Another thing that people often do is charge some, something around 8,000 pounds to avoid having to pay any employer's national insurance. So these are the sorts of thresholds that people often like to choose when paying themselves a, a salary from their company obviously speak, speak to your tax accountant, as Mark said, to decide whether or not this is a good thing for you. It's not gonna be a good thing for everybody, but do speak to an accountant and take advice on it. And you can charge a salary for your services. If you own a property with husband or wife or business partner, then you can charge a salary for them as well, for the services that, that they provide. Maybe they provide some company secretarial services, for example. So this is important to know that this is on the basis that you don't have a job where you're employed elsewhere being paid PAYE. If you're already an employee, then you can't obviously use your personal allowance but in your own company. So this is if you're just purely running and getting your income from your own limited company. And it also assumes that you aren't making or taking any other rental income from property that you might own personally. Yeah, that's right. If, if literally your only source of income is um, going to be your salary income from the limited company that you own that has the um, property purchased within it, then yeah, you know, it's, it's a good way, a simple way of using your personal allowance for the year and effectively taking, let's say just over 12,000 pounds of tax-free income. So if you are working for another company and you've got a salary already and you've got your limited company set up for your property and you're going to have rental income coming into that, the next options available to you for taking money out might be more relevant to you, but obviously we are not giving you tax advice on this video. It's very impossible to do that. Um, so we do strongly recommend that you have a chat with your tax accountant um, and, and sort of seek further advice on that. So the next one uh, is loan interest. So this has probably got something to do with perhaps some money that you might have loaned the company uh, in order to buy that first property. Yeah, that's right. And we've done separate content on director's loan accounts, Mark, yeah. haven't we? Um, which explains in more detail um, how and why a director's loan account may arise on, on the company, the limited company that you own. Um, so please do check that out. But essentially, um, at the start of uh, a limited company, as a director and owner of that company, you, you may well be injecting some cash into the company bank account to get it off the ground and start operating. And that would create a director's loan account. Now, effectively, what you've done there is, is as an individual, you, the director, as a person, you have lent money to the limited company, a separate legal entity to you. And that limited company owes you money. Now, like any other commercial loan under a commercial arrangement, it is absolutely appropriate, um, should you choose to do so, to have interest um, charged on that loan at a commercial rate. So, um, you know, what does that mean? It, it could be 8%, 10%, 12%. These sorts of numbers are, are reasonable, especially if it's an unsecured loan. It could be even slightly higher. Um, but that's really uh, for you to, to choose and decide with your accountant. But if loan interest is charged on, on the loan that the company owes you, then that interest is allowable expense for corporation tax purposes in the company. And it's income for you, the, the individual, the director. Um, and again, that is income that is taxable. It's worth noting, though, that there are some um, tax allowances for interest which currently are available. So this is 2023. Current rules are that if you are a basic rate taxpayer, you get £1,000 personal savings allowance, which you can receive as interest tax-free up to that amount. 
um, and that excludes anything you're receiving from your ISA, if you're receiving interest from a cash ISA, for example, so that excludes that. Or if you're a higher rate taxpayer, pay 40% tax, then you would have uh, 500 pounds of tax-free interest income. And if you're a 45% taxpayer, then um, unfortunately that disappears completely and goes to zero. Um, but well done if you're a 45% taxpayer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, as always, it depends on your own situation, but uh, it's definitely a question that you should be asking whoever is, is advising you on tax. And we always recommend that you do have someone that advises you on tax. Even if you only have a small portfolio, it's well worth having a conversation with somebody a bit like Neil, uh, if you're, or, or you know, someone who is um, well versed in, those, uh, in, in the experience of tax and paying tax. And yeah. uh, particularly would help if they were involved in property as well, because they're probably going to know the answers to those questions without even having to look them up. Paying tax and things is quite a big area, isn't it? It let's is. Say. <laughs> and no one likes it. No one likes it. No one likes it, no but it's good to, to talk about if you can benefit from it, let's say. Um, so let's have a little chat about dividends then, because normally when companies um, pay out um, money to their shareholders and directors, it's typically in the form of dividends. So what, is, what does that mean, Neil? Yeah, so after a company has calculated its profits um, chargeable to corporation tax, so that would be after salaries, after loan interest, it then pays its corporation tax bill. And then you have an amount of money that um, is profits after tax and that cumulative profit after tax can be distributed to its shareholders in the form of a dividend, which you as shareholders and directors of the company can decide to pay or not. And the great thing about a dividend is the flexibility really and the timing of when a dividend is paid, if at all. So you don't have to pay a dividend in any one financial year. You can choose to pay a dividend um, in two years time, three years time, this year. And also you can choose the amount of the dividend. So it doesn't have to be the, the full amount of those accumulated profits in the company. If it's got 10,000 pounds worth of profits that it's accumulated, you can choose to pay a dividend of say, 500 pounds. Um, so what's the tax-free amount? Let's say, is hmm. there a tax-free amount of dividend that you can take without, you know, which you might take without paying any additional tax at all? Yeah, there is great, great point. So um, it used to be what now feels like a fairly generous 5,000 pounds going back quite a few years. Going back just last year, you used to be able to have 2,000 pounds a year in dividend income completely tax-free, regardless of any other income that you had. So you could be a higher rate taxpayer, but you'd still be able to get 2,000 pounds worth of dividend income tax-free. In the tax year 23-24, that was reduced to 500, uh, sorry, 1,000 pounds, and then from 24-25, it's gonna be 500 pounds only, so it's uh, and it dwindling. it will probably disappear, won't it? Dwindling far, yeah, it's probably gonna be zero <laughs> anytime soon, yeah. So then, so let's say you do wanna pay yourself a dividend of, let's say, 5,000. What sort of co what sort of rates are we talking? I mean, is it twenty percent for these dividend taxes? No, it's not. I'm going to have to refer to my notes to make sure. It's I've a very it unusual. Eight point seven five. There we go. Eight point seven. <laughs> it's a very unusual amount, which does change every so often as well. So yeah, eight point seven five percent. I don't know how they managed to. And I guess that's up to a certain amount, right? Uh, yes, so 8.75% is what they call the ordinary rate or maybe the basic rate of tax. So if you're a basic rate taxpayer and you're still receiving dividend income up to that basic rate level of income, then yeah, that would be taxed at 8.75%. And then um, in excess of that, it becomes 33.75%, for example, if you're a, a higher rate um, taxpayer. Okay. Just one, one quick point here is, um, let's say you've decided that you're not gonna quit your day job because you enjoy it and it pays you a good salary and you've got a limited company set up for your property because you don't really wanna incur any more personal tax if you are owning property in your own name and you wanna benefit also from the fact that you can offset your mortgage interest against your, 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 your tax bill in the limited company. Um, would it be fair to say that if you were to earn 10 to 12 to 15, in fact, the amount is irrelevant, but an amount of level of profit in that company throughout the year after you've paid your corporation tax bill, would it be fair to say that you could use that money to just reinvest in further property and not take it out at all? Would that be a good strategy? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely okay. it is, yeah. So if you're a, a long-term portfolio builder in mm -hmm. that scenario and you're building that portfolio within a limited company, yeah, there's no sense in taking them if you don't need it. You know, if you've got another source of income through your PAYE job, for example, like you were describing there, you don't, you know, there's not necessarily a huge amount of sense in paying the the dividend income tax to get the money out simply to then lend it back 
to the company so that the company can then go and buy another property. The, mm. the company has that cash in its bank account sure. from the profits it's accumulated. Use that money um, to, uh, if you wanted to, as a deposit for your next buy to let property. And I guess if, you're, if your intention was, say, in three years' time to leave, your, to leave your job, let's say you wanted to pack up work in three years' time, when your limited company was providing enough rental income at that point you could then start to draw a salary when you were no longer employed by somebody else so you're effectively being employed by yourself on paper you're actually employed and your company is paying you but ultimately it's your own company and then that's when you would start drawing a salary absolutely so another way to extract money from your limited company is through effectively the repayment of debt. Now this is a bit of a you know, category in its own right because it's completely tax neutral. This is, if you like, balance sheet movement. This is, this is basically you've lent your company some money and now they're paying it back. Okay? Ah, so this is the money that I would have put into the company originally when I was um, going to buy my first property, right? Yeah, absolutely. It could okay. well be that. So if you're going to buy, you know, property number one investment was a £100,000 purchase and you put in £25,000 to create a director's loan account. So you had a deposit there with 75% loan to value mortgage. Basically, you lent the, prop the company, your limited company, £25,000. Now, if in, you know, five years later, there's £25,000 of cash within that limited company and that loan balance is still £25,000, then you can take that £25,000 back I would suggest probably doing a board minute to say that that's what you're doing. And, and then what you're doing there is repaying the debt. That is not income, it's repayment of debt. So there's no tax implications for you on income tax as an individual, and there's no corporation tax implications for the limited company either. The only question would be is what you're going to do with the money. So if you're going to reinvest it in property, then that would be daft to take it out. The only reason why it would be is if you wanted to blow it on a new car or a holiday or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. if that's your intention, then have a great time. <laughs> yeah. So I think that just about wraps things up for, for, this, um, uh, for this particular topic. So thanks so much for joining us. And um, we really hope that it's been insightful. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.